In 2018, the once major department store chain Sears officially filed for bankruptcy. After long, grueling years of financial mishaps, poor management, and bad economic choices, the brand, which sprung up in the late 1800s and even built a famous skyscraper in Chicago, would finally go out of business. But why and how? How did the once giant Sears brand slip and fall? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at on this week's episode, so sit back, relax, and let's dive into the story of Sears. If you put off buying that new TV till Sears National Home Appliance Sale, you should know it's here. Come and save $120 on this 19-inch color TV with electronic quartz tuning. Save $80 on this front-loading VHS VCR. And save $60 on this power-made vacuum with beater bar brush. If you want great deals on appliances, You're not Marcia. don't put it off. There's more for your life. In 1886, a railway agent named Richard Warren Sears founded a mail-order-based watch company in Minneapolis, named the R.W. Sears Watch Company. The origins of the business are actually rather funny as it was started out of surplus from a side business Sears had already started. It's always interesting to see how these older companies start out with something almost completely different than what they end up doing down the line. About a year later, Sears moved his business from Minneapolis to Chicago, hiring a man named Alva C. Roebuck, whose main job was to repair watches. Sears then also began to sell mail-order jewelry as well. Two years down the line in 1889, Sears sold his company, but in 1893 founded another company with Roebuck as his business partner, calling it Sears, Roebuck & Company. In the 1890s, Sears began to publish its then-famous product catalogs a few years down the road. In 1896, they had a deal with the U.S. Postal Service allowing them to send to rural areas with free delivery. In fact, disconnected rural areas were one of their big sources of revenue during that period, considering the fact that a majority of Americans around that time lived in isolated areas. Sears gave them much nicer prices for better goods than their local sellers. In fact, opening up these regions to mass-produced items allowed for more factories to be opened up, meaning more people were moving into the cities for work. By the late 1890s, Sears had over 500 pages worth of merchandise in their catalogs. This of course meant rural Americans could purchase practically everything by mail from Sears. In 1895, Sears was purchased by clothing manufacturer and investor Julius Rosenwald, with Sears staying as company president and Roebuck stepping down from his job due to increasing health issues. A decade or so after that, in 1906, Sears began to sell its stock in the U.S. stock market. In 1908, Sears began to sell the American dream by mail order. In the 1900s, Sears started a line of home building kits that would allow buyers to build themselves a house for a price as low as $450. While people to this day use Sears homes, in 1940 the line was dropped. In the 1920s, Sears began to dominate the appliances market via their catalogs. They also owned the famous Encyclopedia Britannica from 1920 to 1943. And then, a big moment in Sears' career as a company. A general by the name of Robert E. Wood joined Sears Corporation in 1924. He led to the opening of the very first Sears retail location in 1925, opening up next to a Sears warehouse. This was a very big move for Sears, seeing as rural sales were dwindling as Americans moved to the big cities for work. The company grew rapidly over the years, and by 1931, retail sales were overdoing mail-in ones. In the era that passed, Sears would start a number of major company lines such as Allstate Insurance and Craftsman Tools. In 1933, they released a Christmas catalog focused mainly on toys and holiday-related items. It eventually became a holiday tradition during that era. Sears had become so big, in fact, that World War II had not phased the company at all, and instead it flourished afterwards, being an unchallenged giant until the 80s. In the 50s and the 60s, Sears shifted its business model to focus more on suburban areas rather than urban. The company became a major source of mall anchors around America and began to expand their car and auto services. 
1969, Sears had grown so profitable that they released plans to build a headquarters building in downtown Chicago. In 1973, the Sears Tower was completed, being a massive project. In fact, the building was so large that it held the title of the world's tallest building for the next 25 years. In the 80s, Sears really began to focus on diversification. They entered numerous different markets such as real estate and insurance as a way to try and grow their brand. It's called Prodigy. It's a new computer service. From here I can go shopping without leaving home. And from Dow Jones, I can find out about In 1984, they stocks. started an online service named Prodigy, a first for its time. And a year later, they started the Discover Card. They even purchased numerous major companies, even the Chicago Bank during that era. However, that period of prosperity was soon to see its end, as Sears' rival companies, namely Walmart and Kmart, began to rapidly dominate the market. In 1993, they ended their product catalog system to try and focus on their in-person stores. That same year, they sold practically every financial brand they owned. The consumer market began shifting its focus to online shopping, which meant Sears would begin to take massive financial hits. These financial issues inevitably grew too massive to ignore. In 2018, Sears filed for federal bankruptcy after two decades of battling to stay afloat in the market. However, after that it was purchased in 2019 by an investment brand named ESL Investments. Shocks are shot, threads are thin, mufflers gone, well come on in. There's more for your life at Sears. Where else could you change your tires, take your rain, smooth out your ride, and catch the game? There's more for your life, for the times of your life. There's more for your life. So what happened in the 90s and 2000s that led to Sears' fall as a company? A lot of it has to do with competition. Sears remained the unchallenged department store brand until the 1980s, when Kmart began to dominate the consumer market. Then in 1991, Walmart overtook both brands. Stores that were popping up in that era offered goods at lower prices than Sears, meaning Sears wasn't doing too well in competitiveness. In the 90s, as online retail grew, Sears struggled. They sold many of their offshoot brands as a means of trying to focus on their retail locations and even spun off Allstate. However, this did not end up doing much for their dwindling profit margins. In 1994, Sears' tower was sold and renamed Willis Tower. In 1999, after 75 years of being in the Dow Jones, they were bested by their rival Home Depot and subsequently lost their spot. A few years later, in 2004, Sears was purchased by and merged with Kmart, with Wall Street hedge fund manager Edward Lampert becoming the new CEO. While the overarching company Sears Holdings was doing fine, its store brands Sears and Kmart were not. They were in fact doing very poorly in comparison to newer brands like Walmart, Amazon, and Home Depot. In the next decade that followed, Sears would lose half its revenue, laying off over 175,000 employees. In 2011, their profits became negative, never rebounding. No investors were truly willing to invest in Sears, which meant the negative profits would only get worse. Lambert, in an attempt to keep Sears alive, began to sell all of Sears' offshoot brands and buyback stocks, which didn't help the company, unfortunately. In 2014, they also sold retailers Land's End, which had been purchased in 2002 for around $2 billion. In 2017, they shut down over 350 nationwide locations, also selling off Craftsman to Black & Decker that same year. A year later, in 2018, Sears Canada was closed. Big appliance brands like Whirlpool left Sears and pulled their products from store locations. Overnight, Sears, once a giant in the retailing industry, has filed for bankruptcy protection. Following and then, in the fateful October of 2018, Sears officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. However, this wasn't the end for Sears. 
A year later in 2019, a New York bankruptcy judge allowed the sale of Sears DSL Investments, a hedge fund owned by then Sears chairman Lambert. His plan was to keep a couple hundred stores open. However, as of today, there are around 34 Sears stores locations remaining in the United States. There's one more your line. Cheryl Teeks is calling me. Gotta have it. We agree. There's more for your line at Sears. So shop around. Smile for daddy. Give him a high. Pull up a seat. Pick up a bar. Come on in and shop. It's so hard to stop. There's more for your line. Sears had a very strange story that I was pleasantly surprised by. It started from a watch brand that, due to the rural nature of late 1800s America, grew to become the country's largest retailer for decades. And yet even then, all it took was for a few decades worth of heavy competition to cripple the 100 year old giant. Sears was not competitive enough to conform to the changing retail market of the 90s and early 2000s and that eventually dug the company's own grave. 